Hi, everyone. Welcome to Spill the Tea Radio, where we interview awesome singer-songwriters and those who influence their lives. Spill the Tea Radio explores the journey, creativity, and inspiration behind the songs. My next guest waited 30 years to give life to his compositions and start recording. In 2019, he went to Small Pond Studios in Georgetown, Massachusetts, and recorded six song LEP, Born Just a Little Too Late. Since then, he has released four more singles, which were recorded in the artist's apartment during the pandemic, and then mixed and mastered at Small Pond. Eight of these compositions were originally created uh, long ago with creative partner Alan McClellan. So, let's spill the tea with Ralph Selbach. Welcome, Ralph. David, thank you so much for having me on. Before we get into this, I want to thank you for all you're doing for all of us independent artists. You don't know how much this sort of thing means to us, my friend. It, it, it's truly incredible that you're doing this for us. And all you folks out there, it's not charging me a penny, not a cent. He's just being a nice guy to help me get my music out there. Please look at all his other interviews. The man knows what he's doing, and we really thank you so much for doing all that you are doing for us. You're very thank kind. You. The words are very kind, uh, Ralph. Thanks so much for that. And My pleasure. And I do, uh, I do hope everybody um, that loves music uh, tunes into the show. You've been playing for at least 30 years. You did these songs 30 years ago with, your, uh, with your writing partner. Uh, why did it? Why did it take so long, Ralph? Why did it take you so long? You know, to I get don't know. Alan studio? and I, um, he used to come to my apartment in Ottawa. He'd pick up the guitar, start playing, and I'd just start singing. Or I'd start singing and he'd start playing. We had a small tape deck there. Um, didn't have a microphone, so we put the headphones into the mic jack, and for some miracle reason, it worked. So we, we knocked off, I think it was like 32 songs. Um, I don't think that I'll ever listen to them. We just record them, do another one. We did it maybe six sessions, maybe at the most five songs a session. Um, and we wouldn't listen to them. We just had the tape running. Then we'd go into the next one and then we'd go out to the bar or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found these tapes when I moved from Vancouver back here to Toronto. And this was in Ottawa. I was speaking with Ben Al. And um, I thought, well, let me take a listen to this stuff. And surprise, surprise. I found a, a few of them worth re-recording, shall we say. <laughs> now, you are predominantly a uh, a singer-songwriter. Correct. What do you believe makes, what do qualities go into a great songwriter? What makes them a great songwriter? Oh, then you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> if you say great songwriter, <laughs> you better start somewhere else there, Devo, <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, but I appreciate what you're saying. Um it's got to come from the heart. I think that's, I, I really think that sums it up. Um, my songs are about uh, love, life, and death, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what affects all of us. And that's what I find it most easiest to write about because I've lived it all before. See, at my age, you've been through a lot. And some of those lyrics, okay, for 30 years ago, have been updated in the last 30 to 32 <laughs> years. I obviously, right? I'm not thinking the same way I was back then. However, the song that we're about to listen today, you were kind enough to play for me. Um, I hardly changed any lyrics on that one. Because mm -hmm. that one was really from the heart. When you do that busking uh, type of uh, type of gig, what do you, why do you do it? What what's the what's the thrill? What's the excitement? Um, to get the music out there. And I've actually written one song about busking and how a busker feels. And it's called Don't Walk Away. <laughs> the busker's lament. Don't walk away. Please. How does, how does a busker you. how does a busker feel? I'm sorry? How does a busker feel? Um it depends how your day's going. It depends what's in the guitar case, money-wise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where are you going to be busking? Uh, there's a place on Church Street right here. It's beside a building. It's a little alleyway. Um, it's burnt out, but there's graffiti all over it, and it looks like a great spot for just a guitar player and a, and a guy to sing. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice that another musician ever gave you? Don't be afraid. Uh, well, that was from Joe, my cousin. Like, just do it, bro. And then the guy that does our work at Small Pond, John Jazz. The guy is John Jazz Abbott is his last name. 
He's a miracle worker. He's really something. And he, helped, he helped me when I was in the studio the first time when I went down there, build up my confidence. Ralphie, you're doing great. And I'm like, Jazz, come on now. Really goes, no, no. And of course, he can always, we'll fix it in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> What's the big challenge for artists these days? Well, you know what? I think a lot of people were trying to make money. I think that's the thing, David. You know, that doesn't happen nowadays unless you're selling merch or you're on tour or something like that. We know what the stats are on what you get back for streaming. You know, every time somebody streams your one of your songs, you get 0. 0.000004 cents or something like right. that. So you're not really in it for the money. Um, I mean, I would love to make money at what I'm doing, uh, you know, enough to survive on. I, I am a professional artist in the sense that I do get paid. Um, I, I think you can consider that professional also, even though you're not paying your rent and that sort of stuff. you got money coming in for your for your music. Considered professional, I, I consider. If you could collaborate with any other singer-songwriter, living or dead, who would it be? Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to listen to just read the lyrics. The guy's a poet. And that to me is amazing. When you can when the lyrics hold up on their own without the music, you know something's going. What what is it about his style of writing that moves you so much? About Lou's style? I'm sorry. Correct, yes. About Lou's I style. I know I'm really well. Lou. Uh Mr. Reed style. Um <laughs> it's the words. It's the words. And I mean, he's so diverse also, right? He can go from cranking it out like the, you know, uh, Sweet Jane, which has got the best lead guitar intro ever recorded. The Ruby really live Sweet Jane. Well, let's get into one of the songs that Ralph wrote. Uh, the song is from the EP Born a Little Too Late. Let's take a listen to singer-songwriter Ralph Selbeck. And I remember. Piccadilly Square. I wish I had met you there. Or maybe Gay Paris, or even Amsterdam by the sea. Maybe a crowded beach, or across a crowded room. Doesn't seem quite right that it all came together so quick, so fast, so soon. I remember I remember I remember When we first met Well, it seems everything got sunnier that day Sort of like the clouds got taken away And every day seems to get, I don't know, just a little bit better. Guess it kind of scares me how every day just seems to get a little bit better. But I remember. Same man ever forget. I remember, I will never, ever, ever forget. I remember. I remember smiling faces. And I remember brand new places. Seems to me I've been there before, but now it seems like to be a high end. I don't know. Brand new door. I remember. I remember. I remember when we first met. I'm 
the top floor Smoking up when you're supposed to, honey Cause I knew the guy at the door That was I Remember by Ralph Salbach. Ralph, what was the inspiration behind the song? What what headspace were you in? What were you going through at the time to come up with the lyrics uh, for this particular piece? Okay. Um, the first nights that you're with somebody, <clears throat> it's always a romp in the hay, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know that first night when you sleep together, like kittens in a box, you know, like... That point when that, if that should happen in a relationship, you know, that one's going to be worth keeping. It, again, that's just Ralphie's opinion. But yeah, yeah, that, that's a, uh, that song is not about anything other than sleeping. I promise you that. <laughs> you mentioned you go to Small Pond to record your songs. Why Small Pond? Why go south of the border to record when there's so many recording studios that are right in your backyard? But I mean, yes, there's a right here. I, I work with um, Will Scholar. He's at Kensington Sound uh, here in Kensington Market. Uh, mm -hmm. Another great guy. Another great cat. So how do people find out about you, Ralph? Do you have a website? Do you have socials? Where can they go to find out more about oh, yeah. your music? Um, you know, have you heard of Song Whip? Yeah, nope. you know, you, uh, it's a, it, what I've done is I've got these little cards made up and, you know, the, the thing, you scan it with your phone and that'll take you right to Song Whip. And in Song Whip, that can get you to, I think there's 11, 12 different sites where you can download my, I'm sorry, stream my music. Excellent. We have been in conversation with Ralph Salbeck. Ralph, thanks for being with us today. Once again, David, thank you so much for helping all us independent artists. You have no idea how much it means to us. My pleasure.